Hello guys, this is AJ Brutico from AJBrutico.com. Today we're going to talk a little bit about switching out your MacBook Pro hard drive. I know a lot of people get a little bit cringe when they think about opening up their MacBook, MacBook Pro or iMac, and sometimes some things you do in the computer can void the warranty. However, I decided to upgrade my MacBook Pro hard drive to a larger gigabyte model in order to run some games and Windows Release Candidate 7 via the Mac's Boot Camp feature. What drive did I choose? Well, I went to Newegg and I bought this drive right here. This is a Seagate Momentus uh, 7200 RPM uh, 500 gigabyte hard drive with 16 megabytes of cache. This is a 2.5 inch serial ATA drive and it runs about $119 as of uh, September 8th, 2009. This drive was noted by other people who have switched their MacBook or MacBook Pro hard drives and has found it to be very compatible, mainly uh, glitch free, as well as very quiet, which would keep with the uh, previous hard drive's uh, characteristics. Just simply a bigger hard drive. What we'll do next is we'll shut the computer down and I'll tell you the steps I went through to open up the Mac and switch it out. I'm recording this on an iPod, I'm sorry, an iPhone 3G, so this is my first time running a video off this, but I felt like I was a little bit too lazy to get my camera out. So, whenever you're going to take a computer apart, always be sure that you disconnect the plug and you power the whole system down. Do not go into standby, shut the whole computer off. The tool I like to use for taking apart things that are electronic and often use very small screws is this multi uh, head screwdriver and I got this at Radio Shack. Uh, I think it was only like five or six bucks. Okay, so two kind of screws that you will need for your MacBook Pro. This is the uh, obviously the handle. Uh, we like to use a very very thin um, Phillips head screw and we also like to use a uh, we're going to use this guy here. I forget the name of it. I think it's like a Torx wrench, but it's a star tip. Um, can't really see that too well, but it's a very small uh, six-pointed star, and these two will be the ones that we will need. When you decide to open up your MacBook, it is a pretty silver coating. It does scratch. It does ding. It does get dirty. So do yourself a favor and put it on a towel. So what we'll do now is we will hook up our little screwdriver. And this is a horrendous thing to get in. Now, you'll see here there are very small screws around the whole length of the MacBook Pro. This is the unibody MacBook Pro, so there's no door. And this is the way you have to get at everything inside, even the battery. I'll come back once I get the lid off. Okay. Now we got the screws out, and I lied to you, and I didn't take the lid off yet because there's a couple of important things to note. Uh, when you're taking out the screws, these screws all look the same around the whole perimeter of the MacBook Pro. However, they are not the same when you take them out. On the side nearest the screen uh, hinge, so this is, would be the back bottom of the Mac, these three screws, one, two, three, are a different size than all the rest. So just for your edification when you're trying to put it back, these screws are that long, whereas in, for example, this hole, the screw is only this little guy. This is probably has to do with keeping the hinge in place. So just make sure you remember when you take the screws out where they go back. Now, we have everything off, and it is amazing what a very thin piece of aluminum this is and yes, I did say it was a silver coating before, but I meant aluminum. It's an aluminum MacBook Pro. It's the current model, um, and that is a very thin sheet of metal. And there it is. You have your CPU and GPU fans. You have your CD drive. You have your big battery assembly going across the bottom here, and of course your RAM. This machine has four gigs. And down in the corner here is your hard drive. Now, as you can see, well, you probably don't realize this, but the original MacBook Pro hard drive sticker is gray. So this is the replacement drive I've already put in. And I'm not going to take it out 
because um, I don't want to disconnect the drive after I've already reformatted the disk, although I don't think that will be a big deal. But if you look over here in this corner, this corner over here near the edge is the uh, power and data connector of the serial ATA drive. And to get at this drive, all you need to do is, it's very hard to see, but in, on the black here, there's one screw here and one screw here. You would take this off, and that will allow this hard drive to tip up towards you. It's kind of like putting in a notebook RAM. It kind of has to tilt back and then pull out. So again, it would tilt back like this and then pull straight out at an angle. Um, at that point, you would then disconnect these wires. And where this uh, six, um, this uh, Torx wrench screw, um, this little six star pointed screw comes in, is actually on the side. Um, I don't know if you can see them without me taking the drive out, but if you were to uh, gather how exactly this drive sits in these two pieces of black plastic, there's actually these two, these four screws that stick out, and they kind of sit in the holes in this plastic. And they're kind of like, it suspends the drive in the air. And those four little, I believe they're gold, um, screws screw in and out of this drive via that six-pointed um, Torx wrench attachment. So this is a regular uh, Phillips head, Phillips head, pop the drive back, pop the drive out. Then there will be four little feet attached to the drive, which you use the Torx wrench for. Take those out and put those aside, and you can screw them back into the new drive when you're ready to replace the drive. After that's all said and done, there's really not much more to it. Um, all you would need to do is to grab your uh, OS X disk, and for me it was Snow Leopard reinstall. I put it in the drive, and the Mac would basically boot up off of the disk and say, hey, do you want to install Snow Leopard? And you say yes, and then it will say, what drive do you want to install it to? And then don't be scared, there will be no drive seen at all. That's because the new drive has not been formatted to be recognized by the Mac OS. So you would have to go into Disk Utility, and if you go at the top menu of your Install to Mac screen, you can access Disk Utility right from the startup disk, and it will find the drive attached to the system. It will ask you, how do you want to format the drive? You would pick the first choice, which I believe is HFS Journaled. Journaled is a method of format that reduces uh, disk write errors and disk faults, uh, as far as I remember. Uh, don't quote me on that. But that's the standard um, formatting modality. Um, I chose that. It formatted the drive. It must be a quick format because it formatted it in about 10 seconds. And then the drive was ready to go. And you just hit install and walk away for 40 minutes, come back, and you have a brand new operating system on a brand new hard disk drive. Um, it's a good point to also consider backing up your data with a time capsule, which I do. I have a 500 gigabyte time capsule. Uh, actually, it might be a terabyte. I don't remember. No, it's a 500 gigabyte. And it is uh, wirelessly attached, obviously, because uh, it's a router as well as a backup drive. And as soon as you hook up to your wireless network, it will say, hey, um, are you restoring your information uh, from a previous Mac? And you say yes. And it says, well, how are you doing that? And you say, time capsule. And then it says, here are the different Macs you have backed up to time capsule. Which one is it? And I picked MacBook Pro. And come back about 12 hours later, and uh, then everything was on it. Yes, it's a huge, huge amount of time to restore, but you got to remember, you're restoring wirelessly, and you're restoring everything on your computer. So basically, when your computer reboots, it is as you left it before you took your old drive out. So hopefully that's helpful. Um, I know the original series MacBook Pro, uh, when it first came out, 300 gigs, I believe, was the highest as far as the 7200 RPM drive that you can buy. Uh, so it's nice to see that you can upgrade the capacity and still maintain all the functionality. And with this now, I'm able to put some games on the Windows 7 partition, uh, which tend to take up a lot of space, and I don't have to eat into my space a lot for my Mac OS X. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. I know I didn't do it to a lot except taking the cover off, but it shows you that you can do it, and it's not that hard. So uh, give it a shot and upgrade your Macs, and uh, make sure you're grounded, make sure you don't... Uh, cause an electrical discharge that uh, wrecks your circuit board, and make sure you look into what voids your warranty on your Mac, uh, because I'm not sure if this does, and I personally, for that reason, kept my old hard drive, just in case there's a problem. Okay? Have a good one, guys. Take it easy.